Hello, everybody. Billy Brim is back with us, and we're going to continue our study on the book of Revelation. Oh, it's so exciting. We're yes, in it, it. Hallelujah. And we're getting revelation. Yes, He's we getting are. light to us. And I, I do think that you should go back and read and uh, listen to the archives. On yes, amen. Because we don't have time every time to, to do it. But this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It came to John, and uh, he was in the Isle of Patmos. Uh, he was actually exiled. He's going to be the scribe who writes this. And uh, the Isle of Patmos is in the Aegean Sea between Greece on uh, the west and uh, Turkey on the right. And um, John is in his 90s. This was written about 96, the year 96. Jesus would have been um, ascended to heaven about the year 30. So we're going to say that uh, 60 or so years after Jesus has ascended, mm. he's going to appear as the risen Lord. And this is the only book we have that comes to us uh, directly in an appearance from the risen Lord. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he's in his earth walk, but here he is the risen Lord. And he comes with a message from him who was, who is, who is to come, God, the creator, the father, and uh, this is coming through the, through the Lord Jesus. It's an angel is involved, and John is the scribe. So John writes a cover letter because it's going to be a message to the churches. It's a prophecy that is given to the churches. And so here's the cover letter. Get your Bible out. I'm sure you have it with you. And this is Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Now this is an interesting point because uh, these seven churches in Asia are not the only churches there were. There were other churches. There was a church at Coloss, there was the church at Jerusalem, the church at Philippi, and uh, other churches. But somehow these churches are symbolic, they're representative, and so all of these churches are in present day, what we identify present day as Turkey. And so this comes from him, yud heh vav -He, chapter uh, 1, verse 4, identifies it as coming from the ineffable God who is revealed in His ineffable, ineffable name, from Him which is, which was, which is to come, the eternal, and from the seven spirits which are before His throne. Much of the uh, a picture that we're going to see here is from the throne of God. And before His throne of God, there are seven uh, manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And you can see this also back in the book of Isaiah. So it's from God the Father, the Creator. It's from the Holy Spirit. And it's from Jesus Christ, verse 4, Yeshua HaMashiach, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from his sins in his own blood. Mm -hmm. Actually, this says, he who loved us and loosed us Boosted. Isn't that a good thing? Oh, yeah. That's what the Greek literally says to him who loved us. It's good to be free. Mm -hmm. It's good to be free from the burden of sin. That's excellent. I like that. I like loved that too. Unto him that us. loved us and loosed us from our sins in his own blood. Thank God for the blood. Oh, my Jesus. And when he did that, Thank you, Lord. King James says he made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. But actually, that's not really the correct translation. The correct translation is, He made us a kingdom of priests, a royal priesthood. Every one of us in the body of Christ is a priest. We stand as mediators between God and this earth. We stand uh, as the priesthood. Uh, we, we, we lift up to Him the peoples of this earth. We lift them up, and we are the mediator in prayer and intercession and uh, to God the Father. But we are so also priests in, in bringing to the earth the revelation of God. So everyone in the body of Christ is a priest. But we are also, every one of us, called to rule and to reign mm -hmm. in life as kings. Romans 5, 17, wow. or 19, Romans 5, 19, we are called to reign in this life as kings, so we are all priests, and we're all from the royalty of God. Oh, my goodness. Wow. He has made us kings and priests. Identifies who we are. He identifies who he is. He identifies who we are. Kings and, priests. and he has made us a kingdom of priests 
To him be glory and Praise dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Behold, now it's going to talk about his second coming. This whole book is about his second coming. Uh, I remember when we went out to see Oral Roberts, you know, when he had had that great uh, vision. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went out there, you and Ken and, and uh, Oral Roberts' son, Richard, and, and I went. And uh, Brother Roberts took me down that hallway and showed me how he had seen that vision. And that's the first time I ever really thought about the second coming being in two parts. I always saw it as two things. I always saw the rapture of the church and then when he comes and puts his feet down, he meets the church in the air and then he comes seven years later, puts his feet down. But Brother Robert said it and I got to thinking, yes, it's all the second coming and it's in two parts. And the first part is the rapture of the church when he meets us in the air and then the second part is when he comes in the clouds and every eye sees him. So this is what two it's parts. talking about right here. This book is a revelation of the things that precede immediately his second coming. Behold, he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him. Ooh, yeah. Now that is not the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church is in 1 Thessalonians, we meet him in the air. Not every eye That's sees right. him. But in the second part of the second coming, every eye shall see him. And we're going we're gonna to see this as we go on. And they which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. When he comes and puts his feet down on the Mount of Olives, the Antichrist, and we're going to be getting into that, the Antichrist will have surrounded the city of God once more trying to wipe out the Jews. And every eye will see him come. And the Antichrist, this book, ha! We don't need to think that this book displays the great power of the Antichrist. It displays the, the majesty of God, God and the end of the Antichrist and Satan and all of those doings. But every eye shall see him. And when he comes in the clouds, they'll know who he is. Uh, the Jews there will know in, in Jerusalem who he is, the remnant of the Jews. And, and we'll and be with him? We'll be with him in the we'll clouds. We're clouds. going to be getting to that. That's in the book of Revelation. What I a can't wonderful wait. book. Woo! Glory to God. No wonder the devil tried to keep us out of this book. Yes, amen. Spelled his doom. And then we went into this in detail yesterday. Jesus said, I am the Aleph and I am the Tav. If you don't know what that means, you have to go look at yesterday's archive. I am the Aleph and I'm the Tav, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus even calls himself by the name of the Eternal. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. What was he doing there? He's the only apostle who died a natural death. Every one of them were martyrs. Uh, and they knew when their time was coming, just like Peter, he knew when his time was coming. That's what all the book of Second Peter is about. He's about to be offered. Mm -hmm. Paul knew, and they offered themselves. But John is the only one who died a natural death. When he writes this book of Revelation, he's in his 90s. They have tried to kill him. They would rather have killed him than to put him on this isle, this exile isle. They tried to boil him in oil, That's and right. he wouldn't boil, tradition says. John is, is particularly the apostle of love. It's amazing to me that when Jesus was on that cross and he looked down at his mother, he said to John, behold your mother. He said to the mother, behold your son. He gave his mother to John. He had a brother, James, yes. and James wrote a book in the Bible. Now, James, at the time of Jesus' crucifixion, was not yet a follower of Jesus uh, in the new birth. But, uh, well, nobody was at that time in the new birth, but he didn't particularly follow uh, his brother. Uh, but when Jesus walked the earth during those 40 days, tradition says that his brother James is one of the ones that he revealed himself to. And James, whose name would have been Yaakov, 
you've got to remember they were Jews. They spoke Hebrew. They didn't speak Greek. James is a Greek, Greekalized Yaakov or Jacob. And so he didn't give uh, his mother to his brother, even though he's going to reveal himself to his brother during those 40 days. And James became such a man of God, such a man of prayer, mm -hmm. that they called him old camel knees. His knees <laughs> became, uh, you know, like calloused with spending so much time in prayer. But when he gave his mother to someone, he gave her to the one that is known as love. And that is the Apostle John. And you couldn't even boil. He had, be, he, he, he had become so permeated with the love of God in his spirit that he could not be killed. He died a natural oh, death. Mm. But he is in tribulation. They've got him there. You know, tribulation, the word tribulation means pressing. He's in a narrow place, pressed. They pressed him right into the Isle of Patmos. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Now, stop right there. Some people think that John was just in a particular state of uh, being in the Spirit on a certain Sunday. Sunday did not come to be called the Lord's Day until a few hundred years later. One thing about the Lord's Day, as I pondered this and prayed about it, there is a thing known in the Bible, and it has been known for throughout the whole Bible, as the Day of the Lord. And the Day of the Lord means the day when God has his total way. Hmm. In a way, right now we're in man's day. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got a will. We've got a free will. And we can see that everywhere evil and all kinds of things are going on because men will it. But there's going to come a day when God's going to have his Praise total Jesus. way. Amen. Now, John, this is, this is what satisfies me. And we're not, you know, we're going to say certain things like certain uh, somebody says this and certain somebody says this. And uh, we're going to agree to disagree. I heard from uh, Papa Goodwin. He stopped by my desk one day when I was working for Kenneth Hagin. And he said, I'm going to teach you today. You're going to learn the most from people you disagree with. He said, people you agree with, you're going to just agree with each other and go on. But somebody you disagree with, if you're an honest person, they're going to force you to the scriptures and to prayer. And there you're going to be learning one of two things. You're going to be learning that they're right and you're wrong, in which case you'll be better off. Or you're going to be finding out that you're right and you're going to strengthen your position. Now, he said, you take me and Kenneth, for instance. He's my best friend. I, I stay up Hagen. all night. It was Kenneth Hagin. I stay up all night studying scriptures with him. And he said, I can't hardly see how he believes some of the things he believes. <laughs> now, that was concerning particularly the pre-Adamic civilization. Brother Hagen believed in the pre-Adamic civilization. Brother um, uh, Papa Goodwin did not. But they agreed to disagree. And they sat and they would talk. That's how they do in the yeshivas. In the yeshivas in Israel, what they've been doing for thousands of years, they take a scripture, one will argue one side, and one will argue the other side. And then they're believing that out of it, they're going to see the manifold wisdom of God. So I'm going to say to you some things here. Some Bible, good Bible teachers, prophecy teachers of the book of Revelation think that he was in kind of a state of ecstasy on a certain day of the Lord. Some think that he was transported Somehow, in the spirit, he was translated into the day of the Lord. I, I more agree with that. I believe that he actually was transported by the spirit into the things God wanted him to see. Like a vision. Yeah, like, and actually being there. Uh, we're going to see later on that he, he's actually, you see, God is not bound by space or time. God lives in eternity, Isaiah 51. It says, yud Hey bab Hey dwells in eternity. So he could translate John into any part of that time, mm -hmm. past, present, and future. We're going to see that in just a minute. And then John's a witness. It says that John is writing the things which he saw. So he actually saw it. He was the witness, and he put it down on paper for you and me. Verse 10. 
I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, and I heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying, I am the Aleph and I am the Tav. We went into detail on this yesterday. The first and the last. What you see, write in a book. So John was transported wherever he needed to be to see and witness the things. And then he's told to write in a book. He wrote it in the book. This book is going to be sent to all the churches, but it's also sent to you and me. That's right. And whoever hears it, whoever reads it, gets a blessing. So if the bottom line out of this is you don't get anything from the teaching of Billy Brim, you will at least have, at least have read through the book. And we can at least claim that. So he said, I am the Aleph, and I am the Tav, the first and the last. What you see, write in a book, and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. This is to be, as Brother Hilton Sutton brought out on Monday, we saw that. This is to the churches. They're supposed to get this. They're supposed to hear it. They're not supposed to be afraid of it. Never, ever, ever read the book of Revelation in their church. Churches. I want to look at the um, Greek. This, this is at least the, the oldest manuscripts we have are in Greek. And I want to look at the word that's translated church. It is the Greek word ekklesia. Ekklesia means assembly or a gathering of called out ones. Ek means out. And the Greek word uh, in the Septuagint is used 70 times for the Hebrew kahal, which means call. What is the Septuagint? The Septuagint is the Hebrew scriptures, what we call the Old Testament, the Tanakh, was only in Hebrew. And so then they wanted to make, in the days when uh, Hellenism had spread throughout the world and Greek society, they wanted to have the world's greatest library in Alexandria, Egypt, Greek. Uh, ruled at that time. So they called 70 scholars together. That's where the name Septuagint comes from. And they had them translate the Hebrew scriptures into Greek. And so uh, that's what the Septuagint is. And it uses this word ecclesia, meaning a called out assembly. I talked to uh, Brother Rick Renner, our Greek scholar. Our, 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 we got our own Greek scholar here. And I said, I want to know what that word church is. First, I want to know, is it a feminine word? And it is. Every time the word ecclesia is used, it's a feminine word. We'll talk about that later when we talk about the bride of Christ. Uh, it comes from these two words, ek and ecclesia. It is a called out assembly. It is translated in the Septuagint both as synagogue and ecclesia. And so the synagogue is a called out assembly of the Jews. Uh, God calls and Jehovah's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. The, um, the Jews and Israel are a called out nation. But this is from barren Israel in the plan of God. While Israel as a nation is God's portion from among the nations of the earth, the church of Christ is made up of individuals out of all nations, all kindreds, all peoples, and all tongues. It is his special inheritance from all mankind. So from every tribe, every kindred, every tongue, he has called us. We have heard the call. We have come out and we are an assembly of called out ones, ecclesia. Really, it would have been better to translate this particular word that's used in our New Testament as assembly. Uh, the Worrell translation of the Bible uh, always calls it assembly, and the assemblies of God saw this, and that's why they call themselves the assembly. It was actually a governing assembly. As Rick told me, there were city-states, there were cities, and they had, so from all the cities, they called out certain ones, made an assembly of them, and they governed together. So we are an assembly, a body, assembled a body of Christ. And so he writes to the seven assemblies that are in Asia. Uh, verse 11, 
saying, right saying, this is Jesus talking, I am the Aleph and I am the Tav, the first and the last, what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven assemblies which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamon, we're going to say, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. So he's writing to these seven assemblies. There were other churches. There were other assemblies. But these are somehow symbolic. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. The lampstands, not candlesticks. The lampstands. The lampstands burned oil. And they had bowls that held the oil. And so he is call, calling these churches seven golden Gold, because of the preciousness that they hold, lampstands, lights. So, from the seven spirits that are before the throne of God, here's the connection between earth and heaven. The assemblies in the earth, the churches are to be lampstands. They are to give light mm -hmm. from the throne of God to the world. And that light coming from God the Father, God who is the Father of lights, with whom there's neither shadow of turning, no darkness ever. He gives his light to the world. He has to reveal himself to the world. And at this time, he's revealing himself to the world through his body, through these assemblies. And so they are called, the churches themselves are called the golden lampstands. And so we will go back to this tomorrow when we come back and see what he said and who said it. It is so exciting. Mm. Church, you're a lamp. Oh, you're a light. Yeah. And your assembly where you worship is to be the same. Mm. Billy, that's so good. Don't miss any of these broadcasts. Billy and I will be right back. You need to see yourself successful. You need to see yourself right up on top. Praise God. That's the way God sees you. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. Word Explosion, October 11th through 13th with Kenneth Copeland, Bill Winston, and Chaplain A.L. Downing in Columbia, South Carolina. The Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 8th through 10th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. The 2013 Branson Victory Campaign, March 7th through 9th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. The 2013 Southwest Believers Convention, July 1st through 6th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. The 2013 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 14th through 16th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. For more information, go to kcm.org events. Time is short. We're living in the last days, and Jesus is coming soon. God has much to show you in His Word to help get you the answers you need, give you peace and comfort, and help you make good decisions for your life, family, and future. God knows the end from the beginning. His Word and Spirit are there to prepare you for what is ahead. The Revelation and Glory Package includes three great resources for your end-time study. Kenneth E. Hagan's Faith Food Devotions are designed to keep you encouraged, strong in faith, and walking in victory every day of the year. Visions Beyond the Veil by H.A. Baker, the true story of Chinese orphans' encounter with the Spirit of God, is God's way of telling you He can do the extraordinary no matter what you are facing in life. The Book of Revelation, a three-CD teaching and study guide by author and teacher Dr. Billy Brim, is perfect to help you navigate the changes around you and reveals the triumph of God in these last days. Order your copy of the Revelation and Glory package today for only $30 and enjoy a 25% savings. This package, hand-picked by Billy Brim, will strengthen your faith and bring the Book of Revelation to life. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call or write to us today. For an additional 10% off, order your copy online. When you walk by faith, everything is going to be all right. For these and other KCM products, go to kcm.org. We are living in the last days. Jesus is coming back soon, and it's important that you be ready. How do you get ready? You receive Jesus as Lord and Savior now. Amen. Don't wait. Receive Him now. If you've never made that decision, 
Billy and I want to pray with you. It's the most important thing that yes, you can is. do in life. What is it? It's just receiving him. That's all you See. have to do. He's done all the work. He's paid the price. He bore the sin. He took care of the curse, everything that's in the curse. He took on himself so that you and I could be free, born again, healed, saved, loose secure. Loose from our sins. We're loose from <laughs> our sins. So just pray this prayer. If you've never done it, it's Amen. up to you to make the commitment. He'll do the rest. Just say, Jesus, Jesus. I receive you. I receive you. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Take my life, Lord. Take my life, Lord. And do something with and it. And do something with it. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I receive it. I take it. I have it. That's all you have to do is just receive Jesus. He's done everything else. Now that, when I said I take, uh, take my life and do something with it, that's what I said the day I was born again. I didn't know much about anything, but I, God gave me that prayer and to make Jesus the Lord of my life and to take my life and do something with it. You'll be amazed at what Jesus can do with your life if you'll give it to him. It'll be so good. No curse, just blessing. You Billy, did the only thing you could do. You gave him the only thing you had to give. All, believe Your me, life. that was all I had to give at the moment. We have a free salvation package to give you a book, two brochures to help you understand and live in victory. Always stay with the broadcast because we're, we're going to teach you the Word of God. God's going to reveal to you the things that belong to you. Find a good church that teaches the Bible that's got victory and healing and faith and grow up and become great. If you would like to have the free salvation package, just call us and we'll send it to you absolutely free. It'll help you get started. It'll encourage you. And don't miss the broadcast. I'm so enjoying this teaching of Revelation. We'll see you again tomorrow. And remember this, Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, be sure to request your free salvation package from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland on kcm.org. Learn who you are in Christ and how to begin living your new life in victory. When you live by faith, everything is going to be all right. Tomorrow on The Believer's Voice of Victory. The Holy Spirit is still talking to the churches. He's still talking to the assemblies. We're still to hear it. And to every one of them, he says to be an overcomer. He never tells them, he never gives them a hint that they're to be overcome.